Pyrus is finally here in Rise of Kingdoms and the initial pre-release battle reports are looking surprisingly promising so today we're going to go over 45 different battle reports with Pyrus paired with a bunch of different commanders and we're going to see how he performs up against a bunch of the most popular open field pairs what's going on guys cheers don't forget to drink your water all right guys the ancient Greece civilization is finally here and that means Pyrus and Pericles are officially in the game in all of their animated glory and look at the background the ancient Greece civilization just looks so beautiful all of the artwork and everything here oh my god now Greece is available to play as right now but the Greece events have not come into the game yet which means that Pyrus is not yet available from the gold keys okay I already checked you can't actually obtain him at the moment that we're filming this video but fear not because the developer over at the rock battle simulator has already implemented him here with all of his talents and his skills if you guys are interested in playing around with this simulator I'll have the link in the description below I am not affiliated or sponsored by them in any way it's just a tool that I have found very informative and useful here to test different commander pairs speco the developer over there has been super friendly and very quick to implement things like Pyro in the game and so today we're going to use the simulator to test them out in 45 different battle reports which means I spent hours playing around with this and also helping bug test the performance of Pyrus as well and it seems like the developer has ironed out the bugs with Pyrus here so he should be performing as we might expect in the actual game which is super nice but if you guys appreciate all the time that it takes to actually get dozens and dozens of battle reports literally hours make sure you drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton and it tells me that you want to see more content like this because if you guys didn't know this simulator works in real time there's no way to speed it up you literally have to actually do all the battles okay now let's go over the parameters of these tests so you guys can understand exactly what conditions these tests are being performed in okay in I think every single test Pyrus was the secondary it just never seemed to be the case that he needed to be primary it just didn't make sense in pretty much any build I also assumed that you are always going to be using the France civilization with Pyrus um he usually is paired with somebody who's relatively tanky like Martel uh in the testing with CPO I may have tested out Ottoman Empire um and we'll take a look at that closer when we go over all the battle reports but a majority of these are going to be with the France civilization when I'm testing up against cavalry or archers they are both using the Ottoman Empire civilization because I mean the bonus skill damage on most of the meta commanders is just insane both sides have 210,000 troops uh I could change this to higher but really it makes the battles take way longer and realistically I just want to see how this is performing in general I gave both sides 17 percent attack this is just assuming that you'll have some amount of kvk technology you literally like the first things that you invest in are attack points right so it's probable that you'll have some amount of attack when you're actually fighting for Pyrus's builds I typically gave him a five percent health city skin and pretty much everybody he went up against got a five percent skill damage skin because I think that's most realistic as to what players would do I assumed both sides would be using a 10 percent defense item because that is like the most common item you would use when going into battle and kvk I also assumed both sides would be VIP 17 to 18. I assumed no iconic crystals just in case you guys don't have any. And I also assumed 40% all damage for both sides. The reason for this is because, uh, and as some of you who have mentioned in these test videos, when you go into KVK and you finish building the Rune Crusader Fortress, everybody gets 40 percent uh all damage and 100 hospital capacity that is just the passive buffs of being in the lost kingdom so that is reasonable to assume that everybody would have 40 percent all damage and this matters because while it's on both sides you would think that it just evens itself out it actually doesn't because this doesn't implement things like shielding factor healing factor things like that so the 40 percent all damage actually goes in favor of dps marches and i just wanted to make this the most fair that we could do it now you will also probably see the different talent builds that I use for both sides in the screenshots but just in case uh, this is pretty much the only talent build that I used for Charles Martel in the testing and this is if you see Nevsky or any sort of cavalry commander pretty much it's always all skill tree same thing with like Boudicca testing and things like that and then for equipment I assumed a less than perfect build because I think most of you guys uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments but I don't think you guys have fully legendary, fully special, talented, fully iconic, everything. Uh, and I think that if we did testing with that, like, yes, it would be good for the wells, 
but uh, it's not realistic to what most players are going to experience i think a lot of players who are using infantry are using the gatekeeper shield with the talent they're using the karox humility with the talent right these are things that are very cheap very attainable and then you know the hope cloak comes from the the crystal keys right you could probably get your hands on that and then there's tons of events and ways to get set pieces right so this is a very good infantry set it's very reasonable that someone would be using it is it the best no is it like a super budget free to play like cheap trash no it's not there's a lot of legendaries here with the uh with the accessories right so that's what i assumed and of course i did the same thing or i tried to build a very comparable um set for the opposition as well uh in every test result we're using an epic weapon with the talent and an epic uh legs with a talent so keep that in mind uh this is trying to be the most like average player assumptions that we can make here okay and with that being said let's just jump right into the test results here okay so this is the first test result we have and this is getting spicy already boys this is spicy okay get your water we're spicy today we see martel pyrus defeating nevsky joan this is one of the best open field if not the best open field march in the game right now now I, I already you're yo you're typing too fast I know you're typing on the comments listen in case you're wondering okay they won three times in a row okay so 17k remaining 38k remaining 44k remaining uh the sev wounds here are a little bit worse for Nevsky worse for Nevsky and here they're almost the same but in every single testing Martel Pyrus beat Nevsky Joan now does that mean Martel Pyrus two gold key commanders are meta no does that mean that this is the best open field uh, accommodation of the game no okay what does this mean well I guess we'll talk about that we'll talk about it later we'll talk about my conclusions about Pyrus okay but I had to start with this because one of the things that I noticed about cavalry main players is they are very emotionally invested in being cavalry mains and listen I'm not trying to throw shade I love cavalry mains you guys are the backbones of most of the kingdoms okay we wouldn't be able to win kvks without cavalry mains cavalry is the open field meta okay I love you guys all right I love you guys but y'all d ride Nevsky and Jones so hard that I just had to, I had to do it I had yo it's so funny to see cavalry mains commenting like when Juga Leon came into the game everyone was in the comments like oh yeah well just wait until you see the next cavalry coming out they're gonna defeat them so hard it's really cringe right and then I talk about Pyrus and everyone's like oh that's so funny that you think that Pyrus matters because cavalry are so dominant it's sorry I just I have to call you guys out it's so funny it's so funny cavalry mains are, are crazy okay and archer mains and infantry mains are are no better okay archer mains cry all the time about how they're not meta and infantry mains are huffing on that copium guy oh infantry's good guys infantry's good i swear infantry sucks i'm an infantry man i know it okay anyway i just went off on a crazy tangent i'm sorry about that okay but yes martel pyrus dominating nevsky joan we'll talk about that later but uh yes now i do also want to mention one thing this is a 1v1 okay we're doing a 1v1 test here so this is not representative of being swarmed it's not representative of aoe skill damage of which we have here on joan okay i'm not ignorant to those things I know those things very well which is why we're going to talk about the conclusions later okay next we tested CPO with Pyrus up against Nevsky Joan we see it beats them with 26k remaining uh a little bit less sev wounds here we see it wins again almost 40k remaining and less sev wounds and here we see it wins again 41k remaining significantly less sev wounds so boom Nevsky Joan 0 for 2 baby now of course we're testing infantry versus cavalry right so of course infantry are more tanky they're better you're going to do better in 1v1s also infantry counters cavalry also cavalry are faster so they might be able to run away okay I know all these things don't comment it because I know okay I hear you okay cavalry is very good no one's no one's denying that it's just I like to make fun of you guys a little bit because it's it's fun next we try CPO Pyrus versus Nevsky Minamoto because I thought okay it's odd to me that Pyrus is beating the best open field march in the game let's try a better dueling pair right Nevsky Minamoto is better at dueling than Nevsky Joan and we see that uh we got 32k remaining here but Nevsky Minamoto does lose second result oh we flip the tides baby Nevsky Joan is winning with a very small amount of uh troops remaining and very similar sev wounds and third result boom Nevsky Minamoto wins again by just a smidgen by just a hair but here we could see that even though the cavalry are supposed to be countered by infantry they're winning 
okay Nevsky Minamoto is very good at dueling so do you feel better cavalry mains okay we, we're good we're good okay no no hard feelings okay let's move on to the next uh test oh I did it one more time uh, I did this test one more time and we see here that uh your boy uh CPO Pyrus does win so it was about 50 50 but um you could see that the Nevsky Minamoto performs really well in 1v1s um here we tested Martel Pyrus up against Nevsky Minamoto once again because this is a good 1v1 duel uh and we see Martel Pyrus loses 12k remaining here uh second test we see Martel Pyrus loses again 15k remaining and third test a mere 177 this is basically even guys this is pretty much a tie but you can see that Martel Pyrus uh does lose every single battle against Nivsky Minamoto all right so uh even though it's 1v1s and infantry typically do well there they're losing here okay next we tested out Martel Pyrus versus Minamoto Tsao Tsao now the reason that I did this is because I wanted to test this in a scenario that is realistic right Pyrus is a kvk1 commander he is a gold key commander and he would probably be going up against Minamoto Tsao Tsao's quite frequently in kvk1 in fact so I wanted to see how well they perform and they dominate now let me just be clear museum buffs are turned on in the simulator for this I probably should have turned it off right I probably should have but uh, let's just be clear about one thing we have double double museum buffs active here and only one museum buff active here uh Minamoto's relic is insane Tao Tao's is okay giving some nice health uh, and they're still losing to a March that has only one relic okay so imagine Pyrus with a relic oh baby so absolute domination here absolute domination just completely melts destroys him okay so Martel Pyrus is going to uh absolutely in kvk1 obliterate any uh any cavalry okay it's going to be exodia obliterate for your boys all right so Pyrus is going to be insane in kvk1 assuming that you can even get your hands on them because gold key commanders uh you know they come around pretty rarely for free to play and low spenders here we see Martel Pyrus versus Guan Scipio and boy do they lose okay now I did give them Ottoman Empire because I think there's a lot of skill damage here and I feel like that's what a lot of players would do and uh they're they're losing okay 52k remaining 42 or sorry 24k remaining and 8k remaining so in all of those scenarios Martel Pyrus is winning against Guan Scipio so for all of you who were upset that I was making fun of Cavalry because their best pair was losing here it's time to make fun of infantry their best pair is losing to two gold key commanders okay next we try CPO Pyrus up against Guan CPO and we see it wins with 44k remaining 46k remaining and 28k remaining so W's across the board here for Pyrus my boy is popping off um and again we're going to talk about my assumptions as to why he's doing so well later in the video and just as a spoiler he doesn't always win okay we're going to get into some to some spicy battle reports here in a second because we bring out the Mo's YSG baby we haven't seen any archers yet okay we haven't seen any archers in the video and this is a kvk1 scenario and boy does it win okay now again the museum relics are turned on these both have insane relics so it's a little bit unfair but I suspect that this would be the outcome regardless of relic presence that most YSG not only performing super well here but also double AoE Woo, just a way better pair uh, we see they win again and again by very hefty margins uh with tons of troops remaining so the most YSG popping off absolutely the bane of Martel Pyrus's existence and we have El Cid okay another KVK1 pairing that you would potentially see El Cid YSG uh 2.8k remaining so right off the bat you could see just how much worse El Cid is than Thutmose I mean El Cid is embarrassingly bad uh but he still wins he wins here by way more and here by 18. so lots of variability here in El Cid's kit but he does win every single time as you might expect because we see archers versus infantry so in KVK1 uh yes you're gonna dominate you're gonna wipe the floor with cavalry but you are gonna get spanked around by those archers and that is what we expect it's rock paper scissors right next we move on to Scipio Pyrus versus El Cid YSG just out of curiosity okay just out of curiosity it does win and it loses here bro Scipio losing to El Cid what is going on okay and then they win here so it's a little bit of a little bit of a toss-up it's they're pretty even I would say the probability that you have these two armies going up against each other in real life is very low because if you're using CPO you're in season of conquest or KVK three and if you're in KVK three or season of conquest you are not using El Cid primary or at least God uh, help you if you are okay 
um so this is not very you know it's not really going to happen i was just curious and it's about 50 50. i would say el cid else uh el cid ysg typically wins next we move on to a meta pairing okay cbo pirates versus budica jugaliang and bro psh, 105k remaining yo double the sev wounds budica jugaliang is just popping off this is such a good pairing in uh, in rise of kingdoms it's insane here we see 95k remaining 108k remaining it is no contest no competition it just melts them okay absolute destruction uh no question about it next we have martel versus martel okay pyrus versus richard who wins now first of all look at this seven minutes it took seven minutes for this battle to complete so again please drop a thumbs up on this video and subscribe for more this video took a long time to make okay this is just for one battle report seven minutes all right obviously very tanky on both sides Richard does win 170k remaining that is from the healing healing and shielding are OP in 1v1s I was just curious to see if the damage output from Pyrus could overcome the healing of Richard it can't okay this is the second report and the third report okay like all these taking six minutes jesus christ um we have a ton of troops remaining here all right so i mean martel richard is still insane in kvk1 because it's so tanky and it's just really hard to crack you really have to use archers to take this down in kvk1 uh and then later in the game obviously you can just you can melt it it's no question you'll see here that even though there's a ton of troops remaining they do still have a lot of sev wounds right i mean obviously there's more sev wounds on the losing side but still like you really are stacking seven wounds with that healing you're stacking remaining as well but whew, boy okay now i wanted to test sargon pyrus this is not necessarily a pairing that i would consider using um but i just wanted to see how it would do because sargon is definitely a dueling commander and this is sort of the best case scenario for sargon and here we see um sargon pyrus beats nevsky minamoto which was pretty much the best dueling pair that cavalry had um and you can see here again 50k remaining almost 10k more sev wounds here we see 42k remaining same sort of thing it wins and the third time sargon wins again so sargon pyrus popping off in 1v1s not necessarily a scenario you would find yourself in but still uh can they be budaga jugliong no they can't still 100k remaining uh here second test 98k remaining 95k remaining uh budaga jugliong is just op af okay this is still probably the best uh open field pairing in the game right now in my opinion it is just so good okay it's it's popping off beating everything all right uh and that's actually it that is the final battle report now you might be asking yourself what about alexander the great well first of all he's got a new background here which looks really good i was hesitant to include alexander the great testings in this video because the developer of the simulator isn't a hundred percent confident that he's working as expected um just as a little spoiler alexander the great with pyrus was popping off it was defeating pretty much everything except for archers as you might expect just like with martel okay but because there's a little bit of uh lack in confidence confidence in Alexander performing as we would expect in the simulator he might be bugged he might be performing too good okay um I don't want to put that in this video because I don't want to mislead you guys I, you know if if he's overperforming and then you know I just don't want you guys to like take that news and run with it and invest in Alexander right so yes he was performing super well but it could be a mistake so there's that and that answers the question but let's go over the conclusions that we have to make about pyrus okay now again as i mentioned before this is 1v1 duels obviously we know that he, because he's paired with infantry they are very tanky they're shielding here with martel it's op okay it's op and it's going to perform super well in the simulator now how does that translate to actual open field fights well first of all the the one thing that people love to mention about the simulator is that there's no surrounding right there's no aoe and that is true but here's the thing about martel pyrus uh, martel has 30 percent bonus counter attack damage on his fourth skill he also has a lot of bonus damage on his active skill and we see a lot of normal attack damage on the active skill for pyrus and on his second skill if you are outside of alliance ter territory which if you guys were curious yes the simulator does assume that you are outside of alliance territory for all those battles okay so you know that might be another reason why pyrus was performing a little bit better however i think that you might be saying okay well how does this perform when you're swarmed right because we're doing 1v1s i think martel pyrus probably would like take swarms decently of course it's still gonna lose and it's it might not trade great but it'll probably trade better than you think because there's a lot of counter attack damage and the normal attack damage includes counter attack damage as well so there's actually like this is almost a mini attila takeda in a way uh, because there's just the white numbers on these on this march on martel pyrus specifically 
is insane so i don't think that you can really make the argument that in you know in a real real open field fights where he gets swarmed um it's like the end of the world it's not like this is a glass cannon march this is not a glass cannon march the other thing that a lot of people like to point out about the simulator is it doesn't include march speed but guys this is you know martel with pyrus if martel's expertise there's a lot of and i know i know i'm brushing past that but most people don't have them expertise i get that uh but at least you know for me i have them expertise and with pyrus at the second skill at five this is actually a pretty fast infantry pairing i mean you you could you could really slap on like a you know the flag accessory for pyrus and like sure it's infantry but it's going to be one of the fastest infantry marches out in the open field so i think these test results are pretty good even when you take into account those facts now the one thing that i will say about pyrus and one of the reasons why uh, even though he performs really well in this testing i don't think that he's going to be open field meta i don't think that he's going to be used a ton by late game players the reason for that is because there is no utility on this kit okay as good as he's performing in these 1v1s he's not providing anything in the open field for your allies or for your other armies and he's not really debuffing anything unless he's expertise which pff, like that's gonna take you if you're opening gold keys good luck that's like four years later okay so i mean yeah it's unfortunate that that's the reality um the meta armies in the game right now like with cpo and stuff like they provide debuffs they provide aoe you know buffing shielding rage regeneration like there's so many different things that are sort of expected of meta commanders these days and pyrus is very vanilla okay yes he performs good in 1v1s yes he is a, a solid commander and especially in kvk1 he's going to pop off uh but in late game there's no utility here there's no buffing there's no debuffing there's no aoe just skill damage right so really um is he going to be used by late game meta players no probably not now i will say we don't know what his relic is going to be because uh the developers did say that pyrus is getting a relic and we don't know what that is okay it's not in the game yet trust me i checked i was excited to find out um his relic is not in the game so he could get the same treatment as um thutmos and you know just really dominate right i mean thutmos got a really powerful relic and he's honestly slept on thutmos is actually slept on he's quite good with his double relic of course um so if they do the same thing to pyrus which i hope they do i think i want to see a greek commander just really pop off right um if they do even still they'll probably give him maybe a bunch more health a bunch of attack a bunch of defense something like that right i would like to see him get a lot of a health uh personally and maybe even more march speed honestly you know so when he does get his relic yes he will perform probably pretty well in in season of conquest uh but will people use him no there's no debuffs there's no uh buffs there's no aoe then those are like the three main things that you need so will he perform decently yes but there's really no reason to use him uh however what i will say is for free to play and new players specifically new players he's really interesting okay also for whales in the early game of course but most of you are not uh i think he's super interesting right because now we have another gold key commander who is infantry who's actually pretty good one of the things about martel is that he's really like solid for a long time is he meta anymore no but can you use him in season of conquest and like perform okay at least compared to other kvk one and two commanders yes okay you can i know whales hate to hear that but like the reality is martel is okay in kvk3 in season of conquest he's not complete trash again i'm not saying he's meta but he is something that you could consider possibly using okay with his double relic and now pyrus i think enters in that same realm i think he is in the same realm as charles martel and so for new players this especially considering his relic could be really good this is another tool that they have going into season three and season of conquest that they have in their in their arsenal to sort of almost compete with with the players who've been playing for a long time okay um is that copium maybe a little bit okay maybe a little bit but i think that he is performing better than players expected and i think he will be used more than players expect as a gold key kvk1 commander he is pretty tanky he's got a lot of march speed and the white number damage here is really good with martel and when he's paired with cpo i mean cpo just uh you know cpo already pops off they both have shielding and there's a lot of synergy with the bonus damage here when you get a shield there's some tankiness here 
uh there's a lot to love about a lot of these pairings and again I didn't even talk about Alexander the Great but I think Alexander the Great is probably like one of the best pairings for him which is great because they both are you know the Greek commanders but I would say probably Alexander primary for the attack tree just to deal more damage uh which you know you could really get into you know how does that affect kvk2 we didn't even touch about that in this video because I couldn't really test Alexander the Great but yeah I think there's a lot of usability with Pyrus he's not late game meta but he is a really solid early game commander and he can be used in late game by new players at least until they catch up with the meta okay this video was a little bit longer than I thought it would be hopefully you guys enjoyed it and if you did drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton of helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it if you're new here consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload a rise of kingdoms video I have hundreds of videos on rise of kingdoms so if you're a new player check out all of my other guides and my beginner's guide in the description below comment down below your thoughts on pyrus did he perform better than you thought did he perform as good as you thought or was you know did you expect him to be even more powerful i would love to hear from you guys in the comment section below with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace